Good afternoon guys, this is my British computer guy here. Um, another video for you. So I've been asked a bunch of times after I would built my uh, 18 by 32 matrix enclosure um, if I would make a, a similar version but for the 16 by 16 LED matrix uh, panel. So here it is. I went ahead and I did it. I completed it a couple of days ago. So I want to go ahead and share this with you. This is uh, a version that is not 100% 3D printed. Um, you do require uh, a stencil sheet for this particular build for the diffuser because in my personal opinion it works a lot better than a 3D printed uh, diffuser. Plus also it's the 3D printed diffusers have a tendency to warp when you're printing them. Um, so this is kind of my, my compromise, but I think this works like this is probably one of the better builds that I've come up with. So I want to share it with you. And I also wanted to share some design challenges that uh, I, I came across in, in the build process. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Uh, some of the things you're going to need for this particular project, obviously you're going to need the, um, the enclosure. Uh, it's all 3D printed. This took probably about, let me see here, 5, 10, maybe about 20 hours to 3D print is uh, everything has like a 20% infill on it, I believe. Um, this was actually the hardest part to print, uh, and this was one of the main reasons I had some uh, challenges with getting this to work correctly. Uh, this here is the, the first version of the back that I created. Now, it's kind of maybe difficult to see on the camera, but uh, it's warped. Um, it warped big time. This is, uh, once again, 20% infill. Uh, it's PLA. It's the white PLA, but as you can see, it, 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 it's, it's kind of harder to see because it's, it's white, but um, it, it's got a real bend to it. The uh, PLA shrunk up after it had finished and kind of made it look pretty bad. So not great quality, didn't really enjoy that. So I had to try and overcome that particular problem. So what I figured out was I figured that if I put some ridges on one side of it, um, you'd be using less material so there'd be less of it to contract. So what I did was I came up with this design. Um, as you can see here, we have fine ridges all the way through it. There's a couple of um, lines here, which are not solid, but they've got 20% infill uh, for support. Um, but this didn't, um, it, it, it did contract ever so slightly on the corner. You can kind of, kind of make it out there. Um, and I think that, but I think that was it. Um, it's pretty much flush so when this goes on the back of the unit the, the the casing it works great um, I also decided to go ahead and include the holes for the power buttons so we've got um, basically we've got a, a momentary switch that goes in here which is a it's a 12 millimeter latching switch uh, momentary and then we also have here um, a 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter DC power socket um, hole and that's these these guys right here um, these, I mean, these are available uh, on Amazon. They're available probably from AliExpress. Uh, I'm going to be doing another video here on my findings with AliExpress because I've I've had a lot of people commenting in the descriptions uh, of my videos and some of the on the, on the Reddit forums that saying that you know why am I why am I you know sending people to Amazon and oh blah 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 you you're using pushing affiliate links etc etc yeah they they are affiliate links but honestly I really don't make too much money on them um, and it doesn't really affect the price you know, it doesn't affect the price you pay for the product at the end of the day but the reason that the, the big reason and I'm going to go ahead and get this into, get into this more in my next video but the, one of the main reasons that uh, I don't particularly care for AliExpresses, on certain items you're really not saving very much money, um, especially when you consider the ship time that it takes to get products to you from China or Korea or wherever, wherever they're from. Um, but yeah, I'll go into that in more detail later. Um, for this project, I am going to leave links down in the description below for everything you see here. Um, and I will also try and find them on AliExpress, the equivalent, so you can get, kind of compare to yourself and make your own judgment call. Because um, the other thing with AliExpress is it takes forever to go ahead and get things uh, from AliExpress, whereas Amazon, typically, if you've got Prime subscription or even if you don't have Prime, you can get them in a, in a matter of days versus a matter of, matter of month, uh, weeks or months. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about this further. So to say that was the main design flaw or design not necessarily a flaw, but issue that I came across was the back plate for the unit. Um, I've seen a lot of these that don't actually have back plates. They just basically have something that looks like this um, that kind of goes 
in there to hold the LEDs panel in place and then they mount the uh, ESP32 chip somewhere on the back. So I'm, I'm trying to make the best of both worlds. I want a, a nice neat enclosure with a back so it all looks kind of professional looking. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this together and I'm going to use uh, Wago connectors for this particular build. Um, honestly, when I go ahead and do this for the final project, I'm actually going to be doing salt. I'm going, to, I'm going to solder it all, but this is just for time's sake. So anywhere where you see a Wago connector, you can pretty much do a solder joint. Okay. Now, the this is the material that we're using for the diffuser. And you can kind of see there, it's, it's fairly, it is fairly opaque. Um, you can kind of still see through it a little bit. Uh, which is perfect and this stuff is actually super perfect for led uh, diffusion especially kind of when it's kind of close to the led itself um, this is this is going to be about 10 millimeters off the the actual led panel uh, but as you'll see in the final pictures in the final video uh, that it, it looks and it works really well now my 18 by 32 project we did use two sheets of this um, but i'm actually going to be using one sheet of this for this particular project because i think one sheet works just as well as two so okay so we started out with the the housing okay uh, simple housing it's got a bit of a lip on it to keep the uh, led all the components in place then the thing falls out the front and also i don't know if you can kind of see here but there is actually a little groove above it uh, between the the lip and the actual side and the reason i've done that is and i did this on my 8x32 matrix panel as well on that build but i wanted to give it give it a give a bit of wiggle room on the actual uh, for the, sh the gel sheet for the uh, stencil sheet so that it could have a, if i didn't cut it exactly right i could still go ahead and whittle it down to get it just right without it being too narrow because that's only literally the the lip there is probably about two millimeters all the way around um obviously there's no groove on this side or this side it's just on these sides here so this side it's going to have to be I think it's 161 millimeters uh, on that side you've got up to 162 163 millimeters and then you can kind of trim it down from there if you need to um but anyway so that was that so the first thing that we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to go ahead and put in the the grid Okay, uh, 3D printed grid, it's uh, at 160 millimeters by 160, maybe just a hair more. Uh, and obviously with contraction, um, it did reduce it a little bit. So it's probably bang on around about 160. Let me take a look here real quick. Yeah, it is 160 point, I would say 0.5 millimeters, okay, uh, square. Now, one thing you'll notice on this, you'll, you'll notice there are little indentations on this particular grid. And the reason for that, and it's slightly, it's slightly off center, uh, it's not banging the center. And I say the reason for this is if you look at the LED matrix itself, you'll notice that there is actually a very small resistor between each LED. And when you, when you print a, a grid like this, if you don't put an indentation on that and you push it on, it's gonna. It, it has a tendency to catch on the on the resistors, and it becomes not flush. And I wanted to get this as flush as possible. So uh, what I did was I put an off-center notch on there to um, compensate for that little resistor. Okay. All right. So putting this together, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We just take the the base, the outer chassis. Let's go ahead and get the diffuser in there. That just sits in there like so. Okay, and uh, perfect, perfect fit. Hardly any wiggle room on that whatsoever. Okay, and then we drop in the diffuser grid, and then we drop in the LEDs. I so say this is a, a tiny little, little bit of wiggle room on there, which is fine. Nothing to be concerned about. It's not going to affect the performance of the unit at all. Okay. All right. Next, this is the uh, kind of a retainer plate. It basically applies pressure all over the uh, back of the LED matrix and pushes it up against the grid, which in turn pushes, pushes it up against the diffuser panel. And this basically just sits in here like so. And in my final build, I'm actually going to be cutting off these JST connectors and these wires and resoldering on some 18 gauge um, wire. Okay. Now this does stand a, a fraction of a millimeter proud of the, the edge, which is absolutely fine because the idea is we want this to go ahead and apply a bit of pressure to push everything down and make it all snug. Okay. 
But we, before we get into that, let's go ahead and get, get the chip in there. Okay, so you do need an ESP32 chip or an ESP8266. Uh, the one I'm using here, this is my trusty old demo chip that I've been using for a while now. So this is an ESP32. Um, it's preloaded with the WLED software. And if you want to know how to go ahead and do that, check out the uh, other video in the, li the link down below uh, that I did on how to flash uh, WLED to your ESP32 chip. Okay, so now the mounting holes that you'll see on here are specifically designed with the, this, this, this ESP32 chip in mind. This is a fairly generic ESP32. Once again, I'll put a link to all these down in the description below, uh, but it should match up with your holes exactly. Uh, and to go ahead and secure that, I'm going to be using some brass uh, brass screws. These are number twos. They're three eighths inch number two brass screws. And you can see that there. And they're Phillips head, okay, or Posi drive. I don't know how you, what you, what you call it over here, um, but yeah, just wanted to go and secure those in there. And there is actually, I did leave a gap below, if you can kind of see that there, um, for the wires to exit out. A lot of the builds that I've seen don't have that, so that was something else I wanted to build into this. Okay, so that will just go ahead and pop in here like so. I just want to screw that down. And I would always use posi drive for these. If you use uh, the flathead ones, um, you run the risk of the screwdriver slipping out and damaging the electronic circuitry. As I found out <laughs> the hard way a while ago when I, when I first started doing this. And these should be just the right size not to go ahead and interfere with the, the buttons on the ESP32. So if you need to reflash or anything like that, you, you can do. Now for this this particular build, what I'm going to do is oh, okay, looks like my 3D print just broke underneath. I might have to go ahead and increase the thickness of these uh, these posts underneath the chip. So if you see that that's spinning, it just basically snapped off. So I wouldn't over tighten these. Uh, honestly, you really only need two to hold it in place securely. Four is a bit overkill, but I was going to use four I had four. Might as well use four. All right, so I'm not going to do power injection on this particular build. Um, I am just going to go ahead and hook up the uh, power and everything to the, uh, the the first set of wires on here. Um, when I go ahead and do the final build on this, I am going to go ahead and put power here, here, and here. That way I've got three points of power injection okay that way I can get a nice good bright even brightness throughout the throughout the uh, matrix to connect all these together for saving time I am going to be using um, Wago my good old favorite Wago connectors so what I'm going to do is first of all we want to go ahead and put that to the side I'm going to go ahead and use the the power buttons and the power port so this is just a regular momentary switch Pretty inexpensive. I think it's a 12 volt one, but it works at 5 volts just as just as well. Pops on there like so. And that screws on the back like so. Okay. Okay. And then we do the same with the, the power plug. Now these power plugs, when you buy them, you can either buy them pre pre soldered or you can buy them uh, bare. That basically that don't have any wires attached to them. The ones I purchased, these were bare, and I did actually go ahead and solder on um, some some uh, 18 gauge wire on these. And I do also went ahead and heat shrinked on the back on, on the on the the bare ends down here, the solder joints, just to make sure they didn't short out or anything. There we go. So as I say, yeah, you can just use a regular Wago connector to connect all this stuff if you want to. And you don't have to solder it. I just like to solder it because it makes it a little bit more secure, in my opinion. Even though Wago connectors are very secure, they work really well. Um, one, thing, one thing you may have to do is you know, you'll probably have to bend these pins just slightly out of the way. Um, not from the circuitry, but mainly just so there's enough room for the wires to get down in there. We'll, we'll give it a try here in a second. Let's take a look at this. No, no, don't need to. Okay, that's good. All right, so to hook this up, we've got the power coming in. 
And we're going to hook that up to the, the negative of the switch there using a two-way Wago connector. That way, when you hook this up, we know that's positive and we still know that's the earth or the negative. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and hook the, let's take a look what we got here, power and negative. All the negatives want to go together, so we want to take the negative from the chip, the negative from the LED strip, so let's use a three way on here, and the white cable from your ESP32 is typically always your negative. Let's trim that back a little bit. And this stuff is really thin gauge wire. It's probably like 22 gauge that ships on these J with these JST connectors. I really don't much like it. I'm going to just take that and bend that over just a little bit, make it, make it feel a bit thicker. And we're going to go ahead and plug that one in to our negative power. Now you could also power these with just a USB power cable, plugging directly into the uh, ESP32. However, I wouldn't recommend that because there's 256 LEDs and uh, it's, you're not going to have enough power. You can only really push like a, an amp through this without, without frying it, so I wouldn't do that. Okay, so the negatives are hooked up. We need to hook up the, 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 the positive and we also need to hook up the, the data. So we take another three-way Wago connector. Let's do the positive, so let's hook that one to there. Give it a bit of a tug, make sure it's on there okay. And then we want to go ahead and hook up the positive from the ESP32. Okay, and we want the positive from our switch. Okay, so now that should be everything. We just need to go ahead and hook up the data and then that will be good to go. So let's go ahead and hook this up here and this one here. Use a two-way Wago connector for that. Uh, that. And so you can see the difference between um, 18 gauge versus 22 gauge. So you know, if, you can look, if you can see that. there's quite a big difference. Okay, so everything is hooked up nicely. We have we're going to have power coming in here, goes through the switch, switch is going to feed the positive through here to this connector, which is going to power the ESP32 and the LED panel. And then we also have the ground. Everything is grounded to the same ground point on the ESP32 and also the, the switch. All right. And all we have to do is put it together and plug it and turn it on. Okay. And to go ahead and screw the back panel on, I'm actually using a number four, a number four half inch Phillips head screws. Um, nice and small. These are just regular metal ones. They're not brass. Um, so the reason I'm, I'm using brass on the chip is because they're the only ones I could find of that size that were that were that I couldn't find the regular steel ones, unfortunately, or the galvanized ones of that size. Okay. So now we have it all together. We have to get the power to it. Okay. So that's the unit finished. Nice and look, it looks nice and defined on the grid. No play in that whatsoever. It's, it's, just, it's great. It's perfect. Back, and you will see, and there is a little bit of a bow in here, and I think that is partially to do with the case as well. That might be a little bit of have a bit of a warp in it, but that's really. I mean, I can live with that versus what I could live with on the other one. Okay. Now to go ahead and power this, um, I did create uh, my own little dongle. Um, I'm using a 5.5mm uh, times 2.1mm uh, power uh, socket, or you should say plug, however you want to call it, uh, to a USB-A connector. And it, they're, they're pretty easy to wire. Um, I've actually done it in one of my other videos. This is a pre-wired pigtail. Um, it comes with two wires. They're 18 gauge, um, and you get... Um, they're, they're also pre-soldered, so you've got some 
they're also pre-tinned. And all I did was I actually took the positive out of this and hooked it up to the center pin on the socket, sorry, on the plug. And then the negative went to the outer sheath of the, uh, the plug. Okay, so to go ahead and power this up, we're going to go ahead and use a, my trusty old uh, Inu power bank that I love. This is absolutely great. Um, only has 11% battery left on it, so we, we, it should be a fairly quick demonstration. But all I'm going to do is plug this into the um, USB-A port and plug this into the socket on the back, turn it around, and press the on button. And the reason they're not coming on the, by default is because there's a setting in WLED where you can actually tell it not to turn on the uh, panel right away as soon as you apply power. So basically I have a lot of power outages here. If I had the power coming on every time I had a power outage, uh, any time they lost power and they regained power, all my lights would keep coming on and going off. It would be it's annoying. So I, I, I default them all to off. So let's go ahead and get into this and I'll show you what settings you have to change in WLED to make this work. But uh, yeah, so this is 256 LEDs. To go ahead and do this and power this, I would say, to, to its fullest potential, you're going to need at least uh, probably a 15 amp power supply. Uh, it's 0 0.06 milliamps per LED or per pixel. So 256 pixels times uh, 0 0.06. It's 15.36 amps is what you would need to power that uh, completely on maximum brightness to maximize the output of that uh, particular unit. Now, obviously, my little portable power supply isn't going to be able to go ahead and crank that much power out at all. Uh, tops, it's probably pushing out maybe two and a half amps. So we're not going to get anywhere near to close to full brightness, but it works uh, quite well in a, in a, in a, in a dim room even if in a fairly well lit room, you'll see. So, um, but yeah, I think that you can get a 12 amp power supply, which will work quite nicely for this. It doesn't necessarily have to be 15 amps. Uh, 15 amps is great if you, um, you know, if you if you're wanting to go ahead and, you know, get full brightness. But 12 amps is more than enough because it's not like you're going to be running these on full white all the time each pixel. So it's going to it's only going to require a lot less than. Uh, 15 amps. You probably only use, if you ever use a maximum of around about 12 amps anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the WLED software. Okay, so first thing you want to do when you've got your everything, if everything's connected and set up, and you've got your power applied to your ESP32 via the uh, your power supply, you want to go ahead and go to your phone or tablet or other device, and you want to find the wireless network that says WLED-AP. Click that. If you've not signed in before, it will ask you for a password. Uh, if you're not sure what the password is, the default password for WLED is WLED1234. Okay, so once you're in there, go ahead and go to the controls and you want to go to config. So while you're in config, you want to go to uh, first things first, you want to go to LED preferences. Right now, it's set to a total of 30 because that's the default. We've got 256 that we're going to try and light up, so we want to go ahead and change the length to 256 and hit save. Next, we want to go to 2D configuration, and we're not using a 1D strip. So 1D strip is like the tape lights that we have in a lot of our other projects. So this is going to be a matrix, so we want to change that to 2D matrix, and then all we get this extra piece of information. So we've got a couple of things to change here. Now, remember what I was telling you about uh, determining where that first LED was? On your panel, um, you look at your panel and look at the, the little white symbol surrounding the first, those LEDs. It looks like an SD card. If it looks like it's, if it's in, in a position to be inserted into something, then the top left is going to be your uh, first LED. So top left is correct. We don't need to change that. The serpentine is not horizontal. It's going to be vertical, and it is serpentine. So make sure you check serpentine. Okay. And the dimensions defaults to 8 by 8. This is actually going to be a 16 by 16. And that's all you need to change in there. Hit save. Go back. Go to controls. And power it on. There we go. All right, so now we want to go ahead and try some of the effects just to make sure everything's working correctly. Let's go to the Akimi or Akimi. And there he is. Now we can go ahead. There's like obviously yeah, there's a lot of different uh, effects that you can do. I 
And that's pretty much it. You've configured it, it's good to go, you can put it on a shelf. And if you want to know how to get all kinds of different pixel art on here, then go ahead and check out my other video. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description down below to that, uh, so you can see how to uh, create your own animated GIFs. Yes, GIFs, not GIFs, GIFs. Uh, as much as I hate saying it, it's called a GIF. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please do uh, leave a like, uh, hit the thumbs up button. Definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed. We've got more content coming soon. As I say, I'm going to be doing some um, a, a, a talk about, maybe we may even do a live chat or a live stream about AliExpress and the benefits and cons of using AliExpress as a s supplier for some of these LED projects. Um, and also, I'm going to be making a giant, yes, a giant, LED matrix. So stay tuned for that. So that should be, uh, I'm going to do a complete walkthrough build all the way from making, actually making it to actually programming the software. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be coming up soon. But once again, thanks for watching guys. In the meantime, I'll leave you with some cool effects and uh, you'll have a great day. Take care now. Cheers. Bye.